Colin, I've noticed that you own some wearables, but you're not wearing any of them tonight, and you're also wearing a very beautiful, professional-looking outfit. Um, is that because, you know, the wearable doesn't really have much kind of fashion yet? Um, and, you know, if so, do you think that the solution is for wearable makers to court the fashion industry? Uh, for me, it's not so much about the fashion um, centric aspect of it because the Misfit Shine product is really quite fashionable and would go quite nicely with this um, outfit. I think that's not really my, my issue. My issue is really around the fact that the physical tracking alone after about a week, two weeks, three weeks, I get a very good sense of what I'm doing and it doesn't give me a lot of insight, uh, new insights about myself. And I think that's the, the challenge with wearables is the, and the, there's no uh, translation to some, a, a metric that makes sense to me. For example, uh, how many kilocalories is that, right? How many kilojoules have I burned? How much calories is that? Does that translate to, how does that link with the food that I've consumed? And so that becomes something that I might be interested in tracking. Um, there's still a little bit of a gap between the, um, the metric, which is the number of steps that I've taken, and what that actually really translates to. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I had mine on earlier, but I, I loaned it to someone during this event um, just because they wanted to check it out and look fashionable. Um, I, I, think, I, think, I, I think I agree to, to some degree. I, I think what, what happens is that we have this you know, Xbox 360 demand and expectation from the consumer, and we're really still in this Atari marketplace. And so we're really still trying to figure that out. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, until we start kind of using, rocking these things out, understanding them, until the apps come, you know, until the apps come, like we're not going to see anything. And so the same thing that happened with the iPhone, the iPhone became like a, an integral part of you when other people were able to take it, be creative, and build things that were useful for us on a day-to-day -day life. And so as these platforms open up, I think there's going to be some really sexy stuff happen. So I mean, I wear mine pretty much every day, even when it dies, just because I always get that question, right? Why do you? You have this accelerator, you know, uh, where's your wearable? I'm like, it's on me, it's my underwear, or whatever. But, uh, um, not, maybe, but, um, but anyway. Um, one of the things that I noticed, or problems with the Galaxy Gear when it first came out is, it was very clunky. It was actually, the watch face was bigger than my actual wrist. Um, and I think a lot of the reason for that is they tried to pour every feature and f piece of functionality possible into this device. So it has, you know, the, the camera, it, it has speakers in the class. Um, and so they're doing everything at once. They're doing health and fitness, and they're also trying to do um, fashion and accessories and then social media too. Um, so what do you think that consumers actually want from a wearable? Um, I, I, a blank slate. I think, I think that that's part of the, they, they let the technology groups go crazy and build out feature after feature after, because if we have this one feature, people will buy it, and that's not the case. Give a blank slate, allow people to build and create things on top of this platform, and then you'll start to see some of the cool things emerge. Uh, the iPhone was, basic, was very simple and very, very basic. There weren't a ton of features on it, and yet people took those features that they had, and they, they created creative things around them, and because there was hope in a marketplace, people were willing to kind of push out there. You know, as long as these platforms are a little bit basic and elemental and, and, you know, beautiful or not, just give us the basic pieces and the building blocks and the community will build cool shit behind it. I think that's part of the problem is, is they, tr they think that they got to build every, you know, like they got to pull every fucking thing in there and it's just not important. What's important is given the basic, you know, building blocks to be creative and that's what's needed in, in across the board. And if these watch manufacturers can just all collaborate they'll see something actually really beautiful happen, which is an ecosystem that works, not the Symbian ecosystem, which is where we're moving towards. I think for me, it's, um, it's a combination of different things. So I look at my health as a, as a holistic thing. So I'm interested in not just tracking my physical health, but I'm also interested in tracking my cognitive health as well. And I think that you know everything that we do in our everyday life, whether it's something like we're driving our car home or we're going to, to work and perform at the office, or we're sitting around this room trying to listen and to new information process that, or it's interacting with friends at a dinner party. We're using our brain the whole time. We have to engage memory networks, we have to engage our higher executive functions, and yet right now, there's really no conversation, there's no um, 
there isn't a device out there that allows us to track our cognitive performance alongside our physical health. And I think that that, that marriage between um, that holistic view of what's going on, we know that yes, physical activity is really important, it does help to build new networks in the brain, it does optimise um, your physical performance and that does ha translate to cognitive benefits as well. Sleep is a very important part of maintaining brain fitness. Um, you know, reduce levels of stress. But how do we know exactly what's going on in our brain um, without these biometrics? And right now, we, there's no device that allows us to do that. And, that. and so that's the idea that we're trying to solve is to bring in... Obviously, I completely agree with Reg. I think having an open platform that allows developers and researchers to extend beyond what you create from the ground up at the very beginning is very important. But at the same time, being able to think about wearables in a much more comprehensive way allows you to open up more possibilities. Because I think it's the interaction um, of all of these devices, all of these metrics that then allows you to gr gather big data around and, and other insights that you otherwise would not get with just the step metrics, for example. I, I love your platform, and I, and I love that you, you talk about the self act. It's really like one of the promises of wearables is the self actualization, and and what you guys do with with the brain and understand. I mean, I'm like one of one of my engineers is working really hard to, to wire our house so that when I think I want my lights off, they turn off, right? And that's the promise of your platform. There's like really cool stuff that can happen from it, more than just the cognitive side. I think that that's the part that's going to get us to geek out because for me, I, I you know, I mean, my mental health is you should see the girls I date. It's, it's just very obvious that I don't care. Um, and, and, but but I, I, lo I love what you guys do, and, and there's so much promise in understanding the, how the brain works and being able to, to leverage that as part of a platform, which will work in this stuff. I mean, who doesn't want to think, man, I want my light off for it to turn off? I'm an expert at throwing a pillow and hitting a light switch across the room and turning it off. I'm pretty badass at that, but I would much rather do that with my mind. So I just want to do a quick audience struggle. Um, how many of you actually own a wearable? Quite a few. Well, I guess we're at a wearables panel, so not all that surprising. Um, and um, you know, I'm going to ask you two categories. One is health and fitness, and the other one is social. Um, so that includes taking pictures and posting to social media. How many of you would, would prefer to use it or mainly use it for health and fitness? Um, what about social? That's really interesting. Um, I'd say it's probably about 90% for health and fitness. Um, so in, just to focus on that then, health and fitness, I'm getting, you know, I, I love being able to see that I've, you know, maybe 300 steps today or I don't know, whatever this pedometer is going to tell me in my device, but I feel like there's nothing really all that actionable yet that's going to make me healthier from having a wearable. How far away do you think we are from producing devices that are going to be able to, to give us sort of real useful information that will make you know, us healthier and fitter and happier? I think it's going to happen within the next 12 to 18 months. It's not, we're not far away. I think we have devices. We don't, we, we're starting to garner interesting data. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time for all of the APIs to, to become uh, you know, to be more integrated with each other, but I think it's, we're not all that far away, and most devices now are, are opening up their APIs, and so we're going to see a, a proliferation of new applications. So you're going to start to see more stickiness. So people like me who kind of drop off after three weeks will find new reasons for coming back onto the platform. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, what, that's the promise of what, the next iteration of apps, because I think the app, the mobile app is kind of dead anyway. Um, but, but I think it's, I, I, within the next 12 months, I think there's already things that can tell what we're drinking and what we're eating and, and then, you know, eventually, like, we'll be able to understand emotion, like, wait, wait, emotion is an important part of your, your exercise regime, what you eat and everything else like that. The problem is it's so damn hard for us to input everything and that's, that's a big problem. But if, if there's a platform that understands what I'm eating and can sync up with my brainwaves to understand how I feel, then all of a sudden we start to understand each other better. And that's the promise of wearable technology. It's this, this self-actualization piece, but also this being able to better connect to the collective as a whole. I think it's really important for us. You know, I think all technology, and I can argue this till, till the sun goes down, maybe I have to smoke weed or whatever to get it down. But, but what's important is like, like technology was made for us to connect and to interact better with other people. And if we don't have that interaction, that connection point, 
then what's, what, what's the big deal for it? And so from the self-actualized point, I think, it's, I think it's paramount, I think it's super important, and I think it's less than 12 months away. We just still don't understand how to work big data sets yet, and we, you know, guess, guess what? Real time is not, doesn't even really exist um, for what you think it is, so it's not even fucking there. So these are things that we have to be able to do. Um, we just pretend like we've got it, and then maybe it happens, but hey, I'm with you, 12 months. So I definitely want to return to this point about big data and analytics because I agree with you and I think it's a very, very hyped up space. Um, but back to sort of um, where you said that technology was made for us to connect. Um, you know, when, when you're wearing a Google Glass, no offense to people that might be wearing it now, you know, it it's kind of makes for an awkward conversational experience. There is literally a camera mounted to the side of your face. Um, and I often wonder whether or not wearables are going to make us more or less social. Um, and I can, I can definitely see the argument that it, it means you don't bring your cell phone out um, or your iPhone. Maybe you just have this device that just kind of, it's a little bit more subtle, it's on your wrist, and you get an email, and you can see it, and you can brush it aside. Um, but also, you know, having this thing on your face, like, you know, the counterpoint is we're just going to be just constantly doing other things instead of paying attention to each other. So where do you sort of come down on, on that side of the debate? So I, I, think it, it, I think it's meant to enhance conversation. Like we don't have the same communication, um, not just because you're you, Chrissy, but just because you're British, you use different words. Uh, no one knows that you are because you're so good at hiding it right now. But, but, but we, like, there are words that come up. If, if while you're talking, a word pops up and it allows me to understand and communicate with you better, like that brings it together. I think the apps that will win and the things that will matter, and I've said this before, you know, even over at VentureBeat, it's, it's um, the entrepreneurs that will win in this new space are the ones that understand uh, empathy. And the applications and the platforms that are created that best allow people to empathize with e each other and, and where empathy is actually kind of rules the day, that's the ones that will be significant. And that's the ones that will win long term in, in, in this type of interaction. So it's not very empathetic with me talking to you and looking at a Tumblr that's showing pictures of, of you know, I, I was going to go elsewhere, but cat gifts, right? Like, that's just not, but that's not going to happen. But if there are apps that allow us to understand each other better, I think those are going to be the ones that win long term because we're still animal. I, we still want to connect with people. And if I'm distracted while I'm talking to you, you're not going to want to connect with me long term. And I think that that's what, I think that's where the, 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 the river runs and that's what will kind of drive this market is that type of things. Oh, man. I, you know, I'm. Come on, I'm distracted right now, right? <laughs> but, 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 but in, but in, but in, but in general, um, no, no. I think that there's there's opportunities for it to be enhanced. Um, but that's when the apps come. The apps aren't there. No, one, it's not really there. Guess what? There are no apps right now. So uh, we'll see. I, I like your question. I think that um, that's the paradigm that we were focused around earlier with wearable technology. It has to be fashionable or it has to be invisible or it has to be discreet. It has to be something that you kind of doesn't call to people's attention that you're wearing something. I think what Google Glass did with this product is that it's very visible and I think it's, it's really helped us with our device, the Insight, because our device by definition, because it's a brain scanner, it has to be worn on your head. So it has to be something that's a visible technology and so one thing that I would say is, yes, not everybody will feel comfortable wearing it. It is unusual to wear something on your head. It will take time for the community to accept it at large. But don't forget that we're just seeing the very first iteration of these products emerge. Um, there's technologies will come within the next five years that will transform radically the form factor of these devices and they will become a lot more embedded. I think what, if you define wearables, it's really just an augmentation of, of capacity, if you think about that sort of, it in that light. So wearables in the sense that you're wearing something external to your body or something that's embedded in your body that's not natural to the, the current biological systems, but it's... Um, but it extends your, your capacity, right? So I see that as being the definition of wearables, not necessarily something that's overtly um, vis visible, because that's what it is today. But we're talking about, you know, like the computers in the 70s. It's going to transform so radically in the next, you know, five, 10 years. 